Hey, this is Kim. I have a raglan hack for you for these hot summer days. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Welcome to my channel and thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend with me. Today I am going to show you how I took the Rockford Raglan pattern from Love Notions and made it into a sleeveless halter type neckline. Um, it's not a true halter because it's not backless, um, but it does have that sort of shoulder slope inward that I think is really attractive and um, I am going to show you how to do that. I've always loved halter look. Um, that neckline I think is really flattering. I think it slims big arms. I think that it is just a really cool and comfortable thing to wear in the summer as well. So when I wanted to hack the raglan, the Rockford raglan, the first thing I thought of, this is something I've been wanting to do for a really long time, is to hack it without sleeves. Now there are a few modifications you have to do to the pattern in order to do this, but I'm going to show you exactly how to do that today. I want to thank all of you for uh, subscribing and liking my videos and sharing them. It really does help to support the channel. It really does help me to bring you good content. So with that, I'm going to cut right to that tutorial and you can see exactly how I did this step by step. And I'll be back to talk to you at the end. Okay, first of all, what you're going to need are all the pattern pieces of the whatever view you're doing of the Rockford Raglan. This is view C, um, which this is the underneath part. Then I have the full piece here, and I have the back here. Alright? So you're going to make the adjustments both on the front and the back. And actually, you only need to do one or the other and then transfer the markings to the other piece as far as the overlay and the underlay goes. Alright, so I'm just going to start with the front. So you'll need all those pieces. You will need just the top portion of the sleeve piece. You don't have to print the whole thing. You can just print the top neckline area. You'll need a curved ruler some scissors, and a straight ruler, okay? I'm going to use some contrasting color paper, but you don't have to do that. Let's start with the front full bust of this. I'm doing the full bust because that's what I need, okay? So let's start with the neckline. Obviously, we have to modify this neckline so that we, don't, we won't have this sleeve going up to the shoulder. We do have a notch here on the sleeve that shows the center of your shoulder. Okay, so we're going to be referring to that. So I'm putting contrasting paper underneath so that you can see what I'm doing. Of course, you can use white if that's what you prefer to do. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to match the front of the sleeve, the arm side, with the front of the raglan, okay? And I know that I'm going to need to extend that neckline at least up until that notch because that is the middle of my shoulder. So I'm going to overlap these pieces by the seam allowance which is 3 8 So this is a 3 8 seam allowance right here, okay? So I'm going to overlap that and then I'm simply going to mark this point right here and that is how high up this piece would need to be. However, I'm going to add just a half an inch of seam allowance to that so that it has a little bit of room to overlap when we get there. So that is going to be where I need this piece to be. Okay? And first I'm going to just extend this neckline because I want that to be super nice. So I'm going to line up my curved ruler with the neckline and just trace it up as far as I want it to go. 
So this is my new neckline from here all the way up to here, and this is the center of my shoulder, okay? So now when you make a curve, if you know the beginning point and the ending point, you can use a curve ru ruler to make that curve. So what I'm going to do is take my curved ruler and create this arms, new arm side, basically, on the front. So I'm just going to curve it up and it's going to get extended by half an inch. So right here is where your seam is going to go. Okay? So then I'm just going to go ahead and cut that out. And I will have the front over or the front underneath layer or the only layer if you don't choose to do you see. I'm going to just cut it along that curve. And create my new neckline by cutting it. Alright, so this is your new front Piece, okay, so we're going to put that aside and we're going to do the back. And again, we're going to do the same thing on the back by just going ahead and taping this paper down underneath so that you can draw new lines. This is a great first project to uh, if you want to try a hack because it's super simple. All right, now I'm going to take that sleeve piece again and do the same thing I did on the front. All right, I'm going to line up back to back, okay? So matching back to back, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, first I'm going to transfer my notch to the other side of this paper so that I know where it is because I have to turn it upside down. I'm going to extend that neckline, overlap by the seam allowance, so 3 eighths of an inch overlap there. And then I'm going to create that point again where the neckline needs to go and I'm going to be extending it a half an inch. for a seam allowance there, okay? So then I'm gonna go ahead and draw this new neckline. And this is the back. Okay, so I have my point here and I have my point here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my curve ruler and draw a nice smooth point. And now I have my back piece, and we'll go ahead and cut that out. So now that you have your front and your back piece, what you're going to do is take the overlay piece and your front piece, and you're just going to copy this new neckline over to that piece by putting it on this side and then flipping it over and tracing it onto that side. Super simple. Next we need to look at the neckline because we cannot use the standard neckband that comes with it because it's not the right length anymore. Because it is made to go all the way up with that included shoulder, the slope is different, so we're going to need to modify that. So we're going to take and measure this neckline. All right, so in the front, we'll measure the half of it. Okay, half of it is seven inches, so we're gonna have 14 in the front. Now we're gonna measure it in the back. In the back, we have about six and a half. 
So we have 13 in the back. So 13 plus 14 is 27 inches. That is the circumference of your neckline. If you did a neck band that was exactly the circumference of your neckline, it would not lay down. So you need it to stretch, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that 27 inches and you're gonna multiply that times 0 0.80. Anywhere from 0 0.80 to 0.85, depending on how much you like to stretch things. And it also depends on the fabric. But this is a good rule of thumb, 0 0.80, all right? So what you end up with there is 19.6, okay? We're gonna go ahead and um, add seam allowances onto that. We have to add 3 eighths of an inch onto both ends of the neck band. So what we're gonna end up with is to add 3 quarters of an inch to this because 3 eighths times 2 is 6 eighths, which is 3 quarters of an inch. All right, so then we're gonna end up with 20.35, which is pretty close to 20 and 3 eighths. So that's what we're gonna cut. We're gonna cut 20 and 3 eighths inches neck band. And we're gonna do that two inches wide. So if you were to use this one, it would be pretty far off. Because this is on the fold now, so it would be, basically this would be 20, four inches, and that would be way too long for that neck band, okay? So we're gonna cut it 10 inches folded, plus a little bit for the 3 eighths of an inch, I would say like a little bit past a quarter of an inch on the end. So basically you're going to fold your fabric and cut a two inch piece, 10 and a quarter inches, okay? And then you will have your neck, new neck band, which would be 20 and a half, which is close enough. Okay, that's your new neck band piece. All right, now you have all of your pieces that you need to do this with one exception. You have to decide how you're going to finish the arm side. You have a couple choices. You can fold this over by 3 8 and just stitch it down. Perfectly fine if you want to do that. Um, but if you want to take it up a notch, you can use binding. So to use binding, what you're going to do is you're going to have to cut off the 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. All right. So you're going to get your ruler again. And I think it would be really good if you just kind of did this step by step so you don't get overwhelmed. You can pause the video in between if you need to. So you're just going to go ahead and do mark the 3 eighths of an inch all the way up and then I'm not going to do the whole thing because you get the idea you're going to trim that off okay so that you have it the edge that you need it to be and then you're going to add your binding which won't add anything to it it'll just be bound on the edges okay now how much binding do we need all right, so we need to measure this arm side just like we did the neckline, okay? So the back arm side, and you want to do it on your new trimmed length, okay? So this new back is 11 and a half, all right, and the front. do my trimming on this one yet. You get the idea there. It's going to be trimmed. All right, and we have 10 inches on the front. So 11 inches in the back, 10 inches in the front. So basically we have 21 inches. Now we're going to go and we're going to do that math again, okay? 
only with different numbers this time. We're going to take 21 inches. We're going to multiply that times 0 0.8 and that will be the length of the arm side binding. Um, you can do that about two inches wide and have plenty to cut off. You can do it like one and a half. It just depends on how wide you want your binding to be. I did two inches and then trimmed it. So now let's talk a little bit about sewing this garment. Okay, I've, I've taken mine off so that I can show you uh, what you need to do first. The first thing you want to do is finish this overlay as per the pattern directions. Do the hem and go ahead and do your side seams and but don't connect anything up here, okay? The next thing you want to do is put your binding on so it, or finish your arm side in whatever method you decided to do. I did the binding, so I'm just going to refer you to other tutorials and patterns that have the binding. Super simple to do. What I did was just put the binding right sides together, so it, I did a half an inch because I liked the look of the binding. And then on the inside, I just trimmed it. So it, it actually ended up being a nice, neat finish. All right. And then after doing that, you're going to go ahead and overlap your back and front together by a half an inch. Because remember, we added that half an inch so that you can do that. So then you're going to have your raw edge for your neckline, all right? And then you already have a new neckband size. You're just going to go ahead and put your neckband on. And the same thing, I have videos that show you how to apply a neckband. You can refer to that. And then you're just going to go ahead and hem it. And you have a fantastic summery, especially late summer, top. If you have any questions, ask in the comments. I'll be happy to help you. And I think you will really enjoy sort of a raglan without sleeves. So in the comments, let me know which view you are going to do of the Rockford raglan um, as a sleeveless hack. I did view C and I absolutely love the tunic look the, with the point at the bottom. It's just really simple to do that overlay. If you don't want to do a view C, you can do any of the views on that pattern and it will be very, very flattering and a great late summer top that you can throw together in an afternoon and wear to a fun date with your husband on Friday night or a fun date with the girlfriends or you can just put it on and enjoy feeling good. So anyway, I hope that helps you. Uh, stay tuned for more tutorial videos. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and click that channel button down there. And also make sure that bell is clicked so that you get notified whenever I post a new video. All right, please have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Happy sewing!